Tell us about the main idea behind a Libra Traficante. The Libra Traficante caravan is going to smuggle banned books back into Arizona. And basically one big reason that we were appalled, I think every major um, movement begins with a spark of an outrage at something. You had uh, Rosa Parks being denied the, the bus seat. Uh, even here in, in Texas, you had uh, Felix Longoria denied burial after his remains are brought back from World War II. He's denied burial in Three Rivers, Texas in the White Chapel, which leads to the rise of the GI Forum. And I think in this case, it was not only did Arizona prohibit Latino studies, they came up with the list of prohibited books. And then to top it off, they walked into a classroom. And while the students were in session in front of them, they took the books of our beloved authors down in front of them and shoved them in boxes. And I'm sorry, if I've got to explain how that's culturally offensive, you are on the wrong side of this argument. <laughs> and it was to hear about this. The, the other thing that's happening, I think we're reliving the civil rights movement. And, and when I talk to some people, they're like, didn't we do this before? And it blows my mind. But guess what? I guess democracy is hard work. We cannot rest. And that's why they don't want our young educated, because at some point we become articulate. We have the means to convey the information and all art busts loose. And that's what's happening right now, because had this happened for sure 10 years ago, maybe even as early as six years ago, we would not have heard about it. But because of multimedia, we got to see kids crying because they were humiliated like this. Uh, their, their culture yanked out of their hands. The system they're supposed to believe in, the uh, you know, sabotaging their education. And in moments we're supposed to inspire them to learn, we're telling them they don't belong in the system. We saw these YouTube videos of the kids, and we had to respond. And I think what's unique about this situation, too, is that Nuestra Palabra, all the way here in Houston, we've been working for 13 years in some of these areas. But there's this informal network that we've been part of of writers, authors, uh, intelligentsia, all the way across the country. So we've worked with most of the band writers, either bringing them to Houston or having them on the radio show. But what's interesting right now is this informal network has galvanized. And some people ask, well, why should Texas care what happens in Arizona? Arizona has gotten very good at making humans illegal. And those anti-immigrant laws spread from Alabama to Alabama to Georgia. Other states are thinking about it now. And make no mistake, if this law to prohibit ethnic studies is allowed to exist, other ethnic studies will fall and other states will follow suit. Another thing that happens is, as we tell people about it, they haven't heard about it. So really thank KPFT for being a champion. We're going to team up with them during the, the, the birthday party bash as well. And we've had, you know, chances to perfect our discussions on the air. It is freedom of speech. We have people pro, con, but we've perfected what we're talking about. But on the other hand, too, what's great, too, is we've been practicing working on freedom of speech for a long time. And that's what's at stake. I think um, some folks haven't heard about it. I'm glad that they're hearing about it right now. Other folks say, well, isn't it because the books are in Spanish? These books are all in English. Other folks say, well, is it because the kids are immigrants? Arizona's pretty much scared most immigrants out of the school system. These are American citizens. And when people hear that this is being done to American citizens, that's when they get outraged or inspired, whichever, whichever side of the term you want to be on. But that's what's happening right now. And I think this network that's being galvanized, this is for the long haul. Um, basically, we've got... People will be going to New York. Students have united to get us to go to New York to show their support through us for the students in Tucson. We'll be Skyping in the students from Tucson. And this is a beautiful nationwide movement. I'm hoping Houstonians can be here to see us off. We leave from Casaramides, which is in the Heights, on Monday, March 12th at 10 a.m. I have no doubt there'll be thousands of people there. I'd love it if there were hundreds of thousands to see us off and hundreds of thousands all along the route. If you go to LibroTraficante.com, you see the exact route that we'll be in. So from Houston, we go to San Antonio. Sandra Cisneros, who is one of the icons of American letters, really, 
She has championed us. She wrote a check to us. She's hosting us in San Antonio. She is actually also getting the Macarturos. This is the, the affectionate name for the Latinos who've got the MacArthur Genius Grant. They're going to buy a full-page ad in the newspaper in Tucson Friday when we arrive. Uh, Genius MacArthur Grant winners will be with us at this press conference. So first we hit San Antonio for a huge banned book bash. Uh, Carmen Tafoya, whose book Curandera was banned, her publisher, Wings Press, is republishing her book and giving us 100 copies to take to Tucson. Wings Press also published Black Like Me. They'll be giving us copies of that, also a banned book from way back. Um, so it's going to be a great event. From there, we go to El Paso. We were just going to stop in El Paso. El Paso has had such a huge response. We're going to do a big, banned book bash there. Cinco Puntos Press is on board. Daniel Chacon, former KPFT staffers and Nuestra Palabra volunteers, Car Carolina Mosevais is helping us. Uh, you know, we, I didn't know Nuestra Palabra to be a graduate school <laughs> for activists. <laughs> She's helping us organize this. Yeah. And again, Daniel Chacon, who's a, a writer that we've worked with, he's got a radio show there. He's promoting it. Benjamin Sines, who's a writer that we love, is helping promote it. Th this network is kicking in. From there, we go to Mesilla, New Mexico. Denise Chavez, another beloved figure <laughs> of literature, is hosting us. And she, of course, does the Border Book Festival. From there, by the way, Jesus Trevino, a filmmaker, will be joining us at El Paso to film all of this. And this is going to be the most touching moment. I think this, there'll be many touching moments, but we're going to go to Albuquerque to meet with Rodolfo Anaya, whose classic book, Bless Me Ultima, is also banned. He has charged us to occupy Arizona. He's donated money, donated books, but the most important thing is when we get to Albuquerque, he's a little elderly. So he's invited uh, some of us to his home to give us the bendición. In Mexican-American terms, the bendición is the blessing. And right before we cross that border into Tucson, he's going to give us the bendición. And then we'll have a huge book bash with Jimmy Santiago Baca, Luis Paturia, and many other writers. And then on into Tucson, which, Tucson, which is going to get even huger. Where we get, team up with the Unido students who have been holding down the fort. We want to give them an award for all the work that they've done. And uh, Elena Maria Viramontes, Manuel Munoz, Lalo Alcaraz. These are just some of the names right now, but it's going to get huger and huger. How much is that other types of media? You, you've already mentioned, of course, KPFT. Thank you very much. And talking about the FM airwaves. But how much has other media played a part in making people aware of this nationwide? You know what's very interesting, actually? Um, it really has been Facebook, blogs, websites that have jumped on this. Um, of course, Spanish media. Um, but it's interesting because we have not hit the mainstream English media hard yet. I was actually on Al Jazeera News TV before we've hit <laughs> the major mainstream media. And I think what's interesting is that, like we were saying earlier, it's new media saving classic media of books. But also, Tucson, the, the Tucson Unified School District has pushed back. And what they're, they're, it's George Orwell. It's doublespeak. They're saying, well, the books aren't banned. People can still get them at the libraries. Well, so let, let's not mince words. There is a law that says here are the facets, here are the elements to justify prohibiting a course. So they can play with words, but the class is legally prohibited. What do you think actually started this? If you look at the law, too, this was carefully crafted. This is, this is a, a long-term plan that was put into effect because the law was carefully crafted. This, crafted. Is, Arizona law. this is this Arizona law. And people always hear about the salacious parts. Uh, clause 1, no cl courses that preach overthrow the government. By the way, House on Mango Street, I've read that like five times, and I've yet to see any talk of overthrowing the government anywhere in the book. <laughs> um, uh, also, that makes you um, resentful. Well, there goes Romeo and Juliet, because broken hearts are, cause resentment, I suppose. And then also that teach, instead of individuals, form a group. I guess British literature has got to go, too. Not sure. Um, you hear about those salacious parts, but if you look down into the law, they carefully crafted it where they said uh, Clause E1. It shall not affect Native American studies courses, which are federally mandated. They also have a clause in there that says it will not affect courses on the Holocaust. They actually tippy toed around other protected classes in such a way that it's really the only class that fits is ethnic studies. And there's been collateral damage. Sherman Alexie, uh, Howard Zinn, some of these other writers and readers that were taught in those courses also 
hit the prohibited list, but someone really had it in for ethnic studies. And I think it's, you know, it's a way to disenfranchise the community. It's a way to keep us quiet. It's a way to prevent us from being smarter and wiser. And I'll be honest, all the wonderful writers I've mentioned, most of them, including myself, we're the first to go to college in our families. And I know for a fact, once someone graduates in a family, it has a generational impact. This is what they're trying to deny our young. Myself, too. I did not read a book by a Latino till a professor, Anglo professor, handed me Down These Mean Streets by Piri Thomas. And I remember, too, he would ask me before that, why don't you write about your family or your stories? And I really thought, I don't remember what I answered, but I'm like, I don't think I, I can't, can I? Who does that? I've never seen any tortillas in a short story. Like, I'm thinking, he's weird, you know? Why would he say that? Once I saw that book, it blew my mind. And if, if I don't read that book, I don't pursue a Master of Fine Arts in Creative Writing. I don't come to Houston to get an MFA, third Latino to get an MFA at the UH Creative Writing Program. I don't start Nuestra Palabra. I don't work with these wonderful artists, writers like High Tech Aztec or Lilo or La Laura, who are now 10th degree black belts in activism. And we've been training for this for 10 years. This is the 10th anniversary of our Houston Latino Book and Family Festival. So we got a crew hundreds deep that have done major events. Uh, Brian Paras, high-tech Aztec, he's actually done caravans before. Liana Lopez is, does national broadcasts. You know, she's published nationally also. We've got some hard-hitting, brilliant activists. They don't want people like that. So in Arizona, they don't want other us's. They don't want another Santa Cisneros because Santa Cisneros is the first to go to college. And when we have books that show us that we are part of the system, that we are thinkers, we change the world. I'm not sure why they're scared, though. I would love to have many more Juno Diaz's, many more Sandra Cisneros's. For some reason, it's these negative images of what... Uh, they, they, I think they think that they feel bad for what they've done to us, that they're going to get even. Not at all. Uh, and I've, actually, what's interesting is my mom was a migrant worker. She would tell me her... My mom taught herself how to read, God rest her soul, and she'd be, she would tell me things. I'd be so mad. I'd be like, they did what to you? You could use, son, no. I've got you. We got our family. We could work. Everything we did was our life got better. And it's like, wow, okay. You, you hear it. You express it. And then you contribute back to change the system. I, I really think someone really wanted to disenfranchise our youth. They're pre preventing our young to have in high school the experience I had in college. And I think what's going to happen is if we don't move fast enough, Three years, you have three years, four years, you have a whole generation of high school kids that will probably drop out because they don't feel like part of the system. Worse, the system tried to obliterate them. And I think this is what the system wants. They want us to drop out. They want they us want to be to pushed out. Second class citizen, whether you feel like it or not. Exactly. And without, without an education, uh, every, statistic, uh, every statistical analysis shows the paths are ugly without an education. So that's what's, that's what's at stake here, and that's what's at work. Over time. What else would you like to do? I would love Houston to keep pushing and helping. So we're trying to get as many buses as possible. People can go to the website, librotraficante.com, for more information, how to help. We're going to start underground libraries. So here in Houston, it's Mecca. We're asking, we're going to collect as many books as possible. We're going to donate at least one copy. We're hoping three of all the banned books to our underground libraries. And we're asking every author, every multicultural author, from now on, when they publish a book, to mail one to each of these cities. We'll have one here. We'll have one in San Antonio, Albuquerque, and of course, Tucson. And the idea is, you know, Congress is bicameral. Our culture should be bicameral. We should, we'll should we give some to the mainstream library as well, but we should never let our history and culture be in the hands of a system that has shown that at best it ignores us, in worst cases it tries to obliterate us. And we will never make that mistake again. And I think your, your grandkids, if you're listening right now, your grandkids will ask you where you were during the caravan of the Libro Traficantes in 2012. I hope you'll have the right answer. Okay. So. Give me the uh, website again so that people can go to that. It's librotraficante.com. I'll spell it out. Uh, L-I-B-R-O-T-R-A-F-I-C-A-N-T-E.com. Tony Diaz, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it.